Stanza 11 reads, Can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? Can honor's voice provoke the silent dust or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death? Let's see the meaning of new words. Storied urn means urn on which stories are written. Storied means associated with stories. Urn means a container in which remains of the dead are preserved. Animated means that looks like living being in which there is life. Burst means stone carving of head, shoulder and chest. Mansion is generally a big house. Fleeting is lasting for a short time and bravo means to become cause of action. Let's understand. Can storied urn? Can an urn on which stories are written or animated bust, a statue of a human being, half statue of a human being which looks like living being, back to its mansion call? Can it back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? I mean, it cannot call fleeting breath back to its life. In the second part, he says, can honor's voice provoke the silent dust? If honor's voice is capable of provoking, making the silent dust move or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death, can flattery soothe the dull and cold ear of death? Because death cannot hear once a person is dead, is dead forever. Let's try to understand in simple language, can urn on which stories of the dead are written or a living human-like st statue bring the short living breath back to its home? Can the voice of honor make the silent dust move or can words of praise plead the dull and cold ear of death? Look at this stanza carefully. There are three rhetorical questions in this stanza. The rhetorical questions are negative statements in themselves. The poet asks if an urn on which stories of a dead person are written can bring the dead person to life. The expression he uses is, can it call the fleeting breath back to its mansion? Fleeting breath refers to life going away from its body. Mansion is human body. The poet tries to tell that neither story done nor animated bust can bring the dead man back to life. Further, he says that honor's voice cannot make the silent dust move. And in the last line too, poet tells that flattery cannot please the death. This stanza is again one of the most philosophical ones. It is an excellent commentary on life and death. Futility of human efforts is strongly stated in this stanza. Inevitability of death and uselessness of worldly riches is deliberately asserted in this stanza. Now, let's try to understand this with the help of a few comprehension questions. If the question is like this, what according to poet cannot call the fleeting breath back to its mansion? The answer must be, story urn or animated bust cannot call the fleeting breath back to its mansion, according to the poet. And what cannot provoke, provoke the silent dust, according to poet? Honor's voice cannot provoke the silent dust, according to poet. What, according to poet, cannot soothe the ear of death? Flattery, according to poet, cannot soothe the ear of death. How is the ear of death described by the poet? The ear of death is described as dull and cold. I hope you have understood this stanza. Let's move on to the next stanza. Perhaps in this neglected spot is led some heart once pregnant with celestial fire, hands that rod of empire might have swayed or awaked to the ecstasy the living liar. See the words and the meanings. Pregnant with here means filled with, full of. Celestial fire means passion or heavenly feeling. Swayed means moved from left to right. And ecstasy means happiness. Perhaps in this neglected spot, some heart which was filled with divine passion is led. Perhaps in this neglected spot, the hand that might have moved the scepter to lead the state is led, or a hand that might have made the musical instrument that is lyre wake up to the happiness is also laid. In short, People buried here might have been philosophers, kings or musicians if they had got the opportunities. See, the present stanza is again philosophical. Poet speaks in vague terms to enhance the importance of the people buried in the neglected country churchyard. He says that it is possible that some of the buried country people might have been hearts full of passion like philosophers or capable of holding the scepter like the king or capable of bringing the lyre to ecstasy like musicians. In short, 
Fort wants to say that these people might have the capability of being philosophers, kings or great musicians if they had opportunities. Now, let's try to answer these questions. What is referred to as the neglected spot by the poet? Country churchyard is referred to as the neglected spot. Who are the people referred to in this stanza? Philosopher, king and the musician are the people referred to in this stanza. See the next question. What does heart pregnant with celestial fire signify? The heart pregnant with celestial fire signifies a person full of passion to understand divinity. Such a person is called philosopher. Hands that swayed the rods of empire signify the king. King holds the scepter which is called rod of empire and sways it. Who wakes the lyre to ecstasy? A musician wakes the lyre to ecstasy. Hope you have understood this stanza. Let's go back once again. Perhaps, maybe in this neglected spot in the country churchyard is laid, who's lying there? Some heart once pregnant with celestial fire. Some heart in which there must have been celestial fire once. Hands or hands that the rods of empire might have said. Hands that were capable of leading the country or wake to ecstasy the living liar or some musician who could wake the living liar to ecstasy. Now let's move on to the next stanza. But knowledge to their eyes, rample page, rich with the spoils of time, did never unroll. Chili penury repressed their noble rage and froze the genial current of their soul. See the meaning of the words first. Ample means enough or probably more than enough. Spoils of time means enriched with time. Unroll means open. Penury means poverty. Repressed means subdued or stuffed from acting. Noble rage means higher passionate thoughts and genial means pleasant or natural. See the paraphrase. But knowledge created with the passage of time did not open itself to these people. Cold poverty subdued their higher passion and froze the pleasant flow of their soul. Go back and try to understand. But knowledge to their eyes, rample page, rich with the spoils of time did never unroll. That means knowledge that has become rich with the passage of time as new knowledge to add it to it. So knowledge rich with the spoils of time. What didn't it do? It didn't unroll itself, its pages in fact. Knowledge did not unroll its pages to these people because those people were ignorant of the things happening in the world around. The first thing, but knowledge to their eyes, ample page, rich with the spoils of time, did never unroll. Chili penury repressed their noble rage. Poverty, chili poverty, extreme poverty repressed, subdued their noble rage. They couldn't do anything, or they couldn't act according to their abilities. And froze the genial current of cells, their soul. And the genial current, the natural feeling, pleasant feeling in their heart was repressed by this penury. Because those people had to work and work and work. Try to understand, knowledge is personified in the first line of this taza. Poet treats knowledge as a person and says that it has become rich with the passage of time. Ample page rich with the spoils of time refers to pages of knowledge become richer with the time. Knowledge has been continuously created. The poor villagers did not have access to this knowledge. Knowledge did not unroll its ample page to their eyes means knowledge kept itself away from these poor people. Chili penury refers to extreme poverty. Those people who had noble passion in their heart, but poverty did not allow them to chase their dreams. It made them work to leave and thus the natural wishes of these people were reduced to a single instinct, namely survival. Poet intends to say that these people could not become anything more than the poor farmers because they did not get the opportunities. They were denied all those things which other people commonly enjoy. Hope you have understood. Let's try to understand it, it through one or two questions. Let's see the first question, see if you can answer, answer it. It's well and good. Who did not unroll its pages to the eyes of the poor villagers, according to the poet? According to the poet, knowledge did not unroll its pages to the eyes of the poor villagers. What has poverty done to these people, according to the poet? Poverty has repressed these people's noble rage and froze the genial current of their soul. Now let's move on to the next stanza. Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and vest its sweetness in the desert air. See the meaning of the words first. Serene is pleasant, unfathomed is not fully explored or not discovered, blush is bloom or become red, 
Sweetness refers to the sweet fragrance of the flowers. Okay, try to understand. Full many a gem of purest ray serene. The dark unfathomed caves of the ocean bear. Who bears? The dark unfathomed caves of the ocean. Meaning, the dark unexplored caves of the ocean bear a lot of serene gems of purest ray. First thing he says, a lot of flowers born to bloom without being seen and waste its sweet fragrance in the desert air. The flowers that bloom in the desert are not seen by anybody. Same is the case of gems in the dark caves of the ocean. Port says this because he compares these things to the lives of those dead villagers who were capable of doing a lot of things but they couldn't do or what they did might not, have, might not have been seen by the people and therefore poet compares these things to the uh, people buried in the country churchyard. In order to validate this statement about the poor dead country people poet gives this example. Like many gems that remain unseen in the dark caves of the ocean and like many flowers that bloom and wither in the desert without being noticed the poor country people too die without being noticed by the world. That is poet wants to say. So poet says that this is the philosophy of the world. Those people, those poor country people, if they got the opportunities, they might have been different or they might have been noticed by the world. They're not noticed because they didn't get the opportunities, though they, they were ignorant. That, that, that doesn't mean that they were not important or significant to the world. They were important. They had their duties. They performed it. They lived and died. Let's try to understand this too with the help of two questions. What do unfathomed caves of ocean bear according to the poet? The answer is simple. According to the poet, poet unfathomed caves of ocean bear a lot of gems. And what does poet say about the flowers? Poet says that many flowers bloom unseen and vest its fragrance in the desert air. Hope you have understood it. A simple thing that you have to understand is poet is trying to glorify those people too who are not glorified by the world in fact. I mean poet wants to say that those poor people, unnoticed people are all so ignorant and he tries to give different examples to prove his point. Hope you have understood.